Good evening, judges. We are Tim Tam, and we're going to present to you our buy recommendation on Grupo Mexico with a target price of 90 Mexican pesos and an upside of 14%. To start, we're going to introduce to you our thesis on what we believe the market is undervaluing. First is Grupo Mexico's cost advantages coming from conglomerate integration. Second, its position to capitalize on global copper catalysts. And third, their relative size on regional Mexican market, giving it a unique dominance in Mexico. Grupo Mexico is a Mexican global player in the copper industry, but they also operate in rail freight and infrastructure. Their main revenues comes from Mexico and the US. However, they also have a global presence in Europe, Asia, and Latin America. Grupo Mexico's most valuable assets come from their mine concessions, with them holding over 13 mines in Mexico, Peru, and the USA. But we should now ask ourselves, what drives Grupo Mexico's stock performance? And the answer is simple, copper prices. Copper prices rapidly increased last year due to the post-COVID-19 supply disruption. However, this year we saw a decrease as economic expectations also decreased. But if copper is the main driver for Grupo Mexico, what drives copper? And this is construction and manufacturing. We can see that manufacturing cycles affect copper prices, as can be seen in the, in the relationship of the PMI index and copper. Regarding our first investment thesis, we believe the market is overlooking that cost of value has come from a fully integrated value chain. As seen, infrastructure subsidiaries help mining operations with engineering, construction, and energy services. Besides, Grupo Mexico's core business is performed by mining subsidiaries, being Southern Copper Corporation. Finally, rail freight and subsidiaries help Grupo Mexico by transporting cargo across the rail ports and intermodal terminals. Grupo Mexico competes in an international commodity market. As there are no economic cartels for price regulation, companies rely solely on cost advantages. That said, despite Grupo Mexico being the fourth largest copper producer in the world, it has the lowest cash cost in the industry. This is because of their superior control of the value chain. Many cash costs are essential in times of high inflation and supply disruptions. Moving on to our second thesis, we believe the need is well positioned to capitalize on global copper catalysts. From the demand side, Great technologies are per demand over five copper metric tons by 2027. This is because of copper's conductivity properties. Moreover, the East Asian Pacific region is experiencing rapid erosion of increased Chinese GDP. China currently around 50% of world's copper supply. Now, regarding supply, an increased taxation in Latin American governments like Chile and Peru has delayed copper supply. Combined these factors, we believe there will be a supply deficit by 2025, which will further increase copper prices. And who is better prepared for this? Grupo Mexico, as it holds the highest reserves in the industry. Finally, regarding our third point, we believe the market is focusing on mining players' global marketers rather than the relative size on local markets, underestimating a specific geographical domain. Grupo Mexico holds the fourth largest copper mine in the world, being located in Sonora, Mexico, and it being Buena Vista de Cobre. In addition, this mine is the largest one in the world controlled by a single operator, which gives Grupo Mexico a greater control of mineral extraction. Furthermore, Grupo Mexico is the company that most controls its principal market, having 81% production market share in Mexico and controlling copper supply in the country. In addition, this mine use is protected by government concessions, which allows the company to take advantage of exclusive assets that the competition cannot fully match. For instance, this is reflected in the longest estimated mine life among competition. Now, all this is reflected in Grupo Mexico. In Grupo Mexico, having superior relative regional concentration, production concentration against peers. And now on to ESG. Although ESG is relatively new, we can see that Grupo Mexico's historical disclosure scores demonstrate how they've increased in each category over the years, with Grupo Mexico being a leading in social, above the median in environmental, but still beyond their peer, behind their peers in governance. When comparing Grupo Mexico against its global peers, we saw that Grupo Mexico was below. However, we believe that this is also 
due to the fact that in Mexico there was um, a low popularity of ESG measures and therefore ESG was it's been relatively new here. Therefore, we analyzed Grupo Mexico against another major Mexican mining company, this one being Peñones. And we saw that Grupo Mexico performed better in each category. Overall, we can see that Grupo Mexico is leading in both social and environmental. However, they still have room for improvement here. Yet, we can see that governance is their main weakness. Now, let's take a look at how our investment thesis is reflected in our financial projections. Let's start with revenue. As said, copper prices drive Grupo Mexico performance, including revenue. Revenue growth is cyclical and depends on economics and in future copper demand. Hence, we're looking for a mining division to drive future revenue growth at an expected KGAR of 7% through 2028. Now let's talk about profitability. We expect Grupo Mexico to deliver a stable EPS growth as cost-related economic modes and high copper prices drive future profit profitability. Grupo Mexico historically has had higher margins than competition due to their integrated value change and efficient operations. We believe this will this will be maintained by, by Grupo Mexico by their conglomerate cost integration. Now let's move on to capital allocation. Management capital allocation priorities are split between capex and dividends. In periods of low capex, dividends tend to increase as we can see in the picture. We expect these trends to change as Grupo Mexico will focus on capex over dividends. We believe this will benefit shareholders as projects like Tia Maria and El Pilar will increase long-term production. Regarding leverage on liquidity, Grupo Mexico has higher solvency than experience. This can be seen in the net debt EBITDA ratios. Although the liquidity is exceedingly high, we believe this is relevant given the copper volatility impact on operations. All of this makes that Grupo Mexico mining subsidiaries could acquire higher levels of debt than peers and have the same credit, credit risk and lower probability of default. We issue a buy recommendation of Grupo Mexico with a target price of 19 Mexican pesos and offering a 40% upside for the current price. This target price is mainly based on a sum of the parts DCA valuation model. In this model, we reflect our view on the company's competitive advantages and its economic modes. As we can see, we expect free cash flow to remain stable in the next few years, but to accelerate greatly in the future as the company capitalizes on copper catalysts. Furthermore, we distinguish individual growth trends for each segment. In our other methodology, it was a relative valuation, which was mainly focused on enterprise value of beta multiples. Now, when we analyzed multiples, we saw that the market was not pricing the undervalued conglomerate cost structure, which is relevant given that it's the main edge of our peers. As we can see when comparing enterprise value of beta multiples, AMC subsidiary, or the mining subsidiary of Grupo Mexico, is trading lower than peers and even lower than its own subsidiary subs and copper, which shows the overlooking corporate cost integration. Furthermore, to have vulnerable computation scenarios, we performed a Monte Carlo simulation. In this simulation, we varied parameters such as WAX, copper prices, and terminal growth rates. 41% of simulations present values above our target price, presenting high outcomes if our investment thesis materializes. Besides our base case, we did two other scenarios, a very scenarios in which we assume our main investment risks and a worldwide recession. On the other hand, our bullish scenario presents a 32% upside, assuming global copper demand badly outpaces global copper supply. Finally, we did a real options valuation model to assess the variability of copper prices and its impact on our valuation. As we can see, all of our methodologies exclude, exceed the current market price, which we think shows an attractive valuation given the company's economic goals and its future on copper trends. And well, now we would like to conclude by telling you why the cost advantages of Grupo Mexico, their position to capitalize on global copper catalysts, and their relative size on the regional Mexi the Mexican market, giving, giving, Mex giving Grupo Mexico a unique dominance, these are the three main arguments that sustain our thesis on what we issue a by recommendation on Grupo Mexico. Thank you very much, and we're now open to your questions. Congratulations, very good presentation. Um, I have a question. You highlighted the three uh, reasons why you issued a buy recommendation. 
I would like to know, which are, you know, I believe I, I agree on them. Um, I would like to know whether, what catalyst do you, do you see in the near term to actually materialize and get to that 24% upside you have? What catalyst do you see in the near future that would unlock that value? Okay, given, given as we said, there is a spectacle of economic growth and an integrated value chain is supremely valuable in these moments in times of uncertainty, in times of high volatility, in times of high volatile prices, high inflation. We believe that these uncertain times will make evident how effectively Group of Mexico's integrated value chain mitigates costs. And that's why we believe the market will recognize its economy most in times where, it, where it's evident. Besides, we are aware that a, a copper catalyst, uh, including grid, these are not uh, like fully materialized because this is a continuous trend. But we also agree that, for example, urbanization in China is rapidly increasing as they need to demand uh, for construction materials, copper for construction materials. And therefore, we also consider another catalyst, which is uh, uh, electric, electric consumers. So we, this, this is expected to increase also as digitalization and smart city technologies come to reality. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, question. Uh, this is a standard convention, ESG, environment, social, and governance, but for each company it's different. I, I, I work at the Volks and for the Volks I would say that for us maybe it's GSE. Uh, what do you think that would be the priority for Grupo Mexico uh, on those three environment, social, and governance? And why do you think that? Well, well, uh, we think Grupo Mexico, the, the most important point for them is obviously envir environmental. This is because the fact that they, are, they have in two of their biggest uh, Parts of the company, uh, they 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 are the companies that most uh, most contam most contam most contaminate the 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 environment. So, well, uh, environmental is the is the main main one. Um, adding to what my teammate just said, we believe yes, environmental is their strongest uh, point where they they should be looking at, given in the industry that they operate. However. Um, both social and governance is important. Yet also, when we analyzed Grupo Mexico and saw that in Mexico, there's a, a trend of family-owned businesses. And in this trend, we can see that the uh, governance, the family-owned businesses have large percentage of the company. And Grupo Mexico, out of the three main uh, Mexican uh, companies, family-owned businesses, is the least one with family ownership with Grupo Mexico holding 60% of their family family ownership, Grupo Carso holding 80%, and Peñoles holding a 70%. So although they still have room for improvement, they um, they are pretty, they're better than their competitors. Um, and in social, they've, they've acquired different um, metrics. In your forecast, are you seeing a scenario of a recession in the next year? Or not? We did took it in, into account, but it is not our base case, as given uncertainty and macroeconomic conditions, we decided to rely on on searchable sources such as World Bank, IMF, and it is only expected slower economic growth. That was our base case. Nonetheless, in our first scenario, in which we assume a world recession and that copper prices drop more than 10%, our downside was nine, minus 19%. So yeah, we did. Nonetheless, the bullish scenario, which represents uh, high copper capital is fully materializing, gives a greater upside, which means that a return for investors is still positively. The acquisition of uh, Plani Grupo uh, could add a value substantially of, of the share or, or not, of the price share or not? Plani Group. It's yes. a new division, no? Okay, we took into account that Plan Grupo was coming into the business, and uh, when we took into account Plan Grupo, we, we took their equity value, and it, was, it did not represent like the equity value of Grupo of, of the entire corporate. And this is another acquisition incorporated in infrastructure, 
therefore we did not think this, this is fully material as Grupo Mexico is covered with it's the company. In addition, we believe Grupo Mexico acquired the company at a great price and, and a great price and having an, a positive net present value. Therefore we believe if it adds value, it will not be material or very little. Along those lines, if if Grupo Mexico were to acquire Benelux, that would add a significant line of new business. How would you how would that impact your, your analysis? And in that in that sense, would you consider buying uh, Southern Copper instead of Grupo Mexico? Well, when we took into account our position, in the third quarter conference call, the company didn't disclose any information regarding the acquisition of CB Benelux. Therefore, we did not consider that in the general wish. When we, so adding to what my team just said, when we did this valuation, um, this was just mere ex a speculation. Therefore, we didn't take it into consideration because we didn't have that information. Yeah, right, but if they were to acquire it, would that impact your valuation in, in any way, up or down? Well, to a certain we don't know yet if Lara is going to enter it into Grupo Mexico. But if it will be incorporated, we have we, we, what we will have to do was to do a, a free cash to the free cash flow model and thus to affirm that question. Okay, and then going back to the latter part of my question, would you think that by buying directly Southern Copper and isolating all the conglomerate risk and all the other assets, uh, you would get a cleaner exposure to mining, which you seem to wish on? Okay, just can you repeat your question, please? Yes, would you, I, mean, I know you, you were assigned the task of buying Group in Mexico or not, right? But one of their key subsidiaries is mining, and it's especially Southern Copper. By buying Southern Copper instead of Group in Mexico, you get into the pure mining business without all the noise and all the other conglomerate issues. So would, would you, did you look at that? And if not, that's fine, but just keep your thought yeah. process as to how, why yeah. don't you? Well, we believe in mm -hmm. Southern Copper is a great company. Nonetheless, it trades, as we said, it trades at higher multiples than Grupo Mexico stock price. Thus, we believe in the current valuation levels. Grupo Mexico stock is indeed more attractive. In addition, the acquisition of CD Dynamics would add corporate value to the corporation and therefore would, would diversify the risk than if we were to incorporate Southern Copper like single in, in the industry. It would diversify the business lines, but it would also add more, more uncertainty and potentially more uh, cost emission, right? But, but yes, and, and you would argue that there would be a, a greater component discount to, to the whole structure, but yes. Okay. Okay. You have another, another question, judges? One second. When you, you highlight a lot of the cash costs, and obviously it's a very cash, uh, very cost efficient company, but would you say that that is more a function of the vertical structure and the good management, or the, the fact that they operate in Mexico, which is lower cost than many other countries, where most of it could be compete? Can you, can you repeat your question, please? Yeah, the cash costs are very low, of course, right? But is that a function of the low costs of Mexican labor, or? Good management of good value integration. It's, it's given due to Grupo Mexico Integrated Value Chain, as said, engineering subsidiaries provide energy to, to mining subsidiaries and rail freight segments provide transport. So, given Grupo Mexico's extensive um, value chain, which is even more extensive than competitors in kilometers rich in rail tracks, that is the, reason, the main reason why they control cost in the industry. If I were to add, sorry for your question, I would say this integrated value chain in completely adds value to Grupo Mexico's cost structure because, for example, engineering subsidiaries help Grupo Mexico with their studies and they reduce risks for uh, intermediary firms to interact with, with the company. And also, it, it performs transportation and intermodal services. And, for example, they, they provide the power generation through their subsidiary uh, General Energia. Therefore, this reduces their costs. Thank you. By the way, great job in outlining the different methodologies for uh, value company. SOTP is definitely the most important for this kind of company. Thank you, Jesus. Yes.